Chris. <laughs> A-Hole Productions. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Seek and Destroy Plays. And today, we're going to play something a little sweet. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite parts of Resident Evil 5, but also the thing I remember that first aggravated me the most about Resident Evil 5. when the, Back when the game first came out, uh, basically this part of the game was supposed to be included in the game. There was going to be a moment where there were revelations, where Sheva was looking at Chris and going, tell me how you got here. Tell me about Wesker. Tell me what's going on. And tell me how you lost Jill. And you were going to play basically this part of uh, like a, maybe a shorter version of what we're about to play. And it was going to tell you the backstory of what happened to Jill and also set up Chris's arc in the game. And obviously that would have made a much it made a lot more sense narrative wise to tell the story that way and to get these characters all in one story. But then what they did was they cut it. Capcom took this scene out, put it in just like a couple quick little um, cutscene uh, clips, and then uh, decided to make it a little longer and make it DLC. And this is the first time I remember uh, something that was supposed to be in a game being cut and sold later on top of the initial you know, $60 price point that the game was. Obviously, I was mad about that, but I was a Resident Evil fan, so I kind of committed to it and just said, screw it, I'll just get it, and I'll get like the, you know, all the DLCs as they come out. And the DLCs are great. They play really well, and I could see kind of now in retrospect why it was separate, but it still makes me a little salty. Either way, though, uh, what we did recently, and this is why I wanted to record this today, was because we played through Resident Evil Revelations, and that game ended in a really unique spot because it had a hint at the start of this storyline. So I figured we'll basically play this, Lost in Nightmares, the DLC to Resident Evil 5, and we're gonna use this as an epilogue episode. But other than that, I'm gonna give people a chance to jump in here. Grifter's already here, what up, dude? And uh, we're gonna get started, so thanks for being here. The fifth head of the Ashford family, Edward Ashford, begins his research. Uh, I love that they did that in Resident Evil 5. They put the, the lore and dates and history of Resident Evil. A few years ago, the BSAA received intel as to the whereabouts of Umbrella's founder. Oswell E. Spencer. I really wanted an Oswell E. Spencer story in this game. We got robbed so big time. We accepted that mission in the hopes of uncovering some info that would lead us to Wesker. Yeah, so while they were tracking Wesker after like the events of Code Veronica and, and uh, the um what's that Wii U game where it's like Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles and Umbrella Chronicles, they added like a new story in there with like Wesker and stuff where he was like looking for the Red Queen kind of like mixing in some of the movie stuff in um, so yeah on their way to finding Wesker they learned the whereabouts of Oswald E. Spencer who's been in hiding ever since the events of uh, Resident Evil 1 even before really and of course he has a Trevor Mansion built for him as well uh, not exact, some some differences in the design of this house, but but still mostly the house. Like, for example, bang. And we are playing this in black and white retro mode. I thought that'd be cool. Just make it look different. Um, although the colors in this are amazing, I just thought it'd be fun to shake it up a little bit. All right. So first thing we're going to do is learn the controls again. <laughs> Right. I'm gonna say that's weird. All right, so B is the run. Okay, okay. So there's thing number one. So there's I think like twenty of those things. I can't remember exactly how many. Um, but uh, we're gonna try to find as many of them as we can. We will switch it. There is a secret mode. I know a lot of you guys know it. I'm not like blowing anyone's mind in this playthrough of, uh, of what to do in this game. But you are going to see um, a different camera perspective. They put in like a little Easter egg to the original Resident Evil. And we'll do that after we get everything we need in here. Because unfortunately I need to find the, um, the 20 Eagle emblems. So uh, I can't do that with fixed camera angles. Found some men down. By their wounds, it looks like they were physically assaulted. I figure they're probably Spencer's security. Lord only knows what killed them. 
Roger that. We knew this mission wouldn't be a cakewalk. Use extreme caution. I always assume that the person they're talking to right there is O'Brien, like after playing Resident Evil Revelations, but I don't think so. Because O'Brien obviously did leave the BSAA. Um, so, yeah. Not going to be O'Brien. Ah, there is. There's a level right here. Snap, snap. Thank you, Peach, for being here. Hope you're having a good night. And we can cover anything Res Evil related, anything as you guys want to talk about um, in the Res Evil universe, we can get it on. Because I think it'll probably take me like a little over an hour to beat this, so. I haven't played this in a while, though. I think we played this last year on the stream and... Oh, wait. So there's two things over here. There's this one. There we go. And that one. So that's three so far, I think. Uh, you are new. Awesome. Well, we're really happy to have you here, Peach. Are you a big Resident Evil fan? Uh, do you have a favorite Resident Evil? I like to ask that of all Resident Evil fans because I find a lot of people, depending on their age sometimes, but I guess personal preference of gameplay, I, everyone has a favorite. So I like uh, I like hearing about what people like of this franchise because this is one of my favorite video game franchises of all time. Uh, it looks like pages from a diary. Some entries are missing. May 9th, two days before my birthday. Played poker tonight with Scott and Alias from Security and Steve from Research. Steve was the big winner, but I think he was cheating. That scumbag. May 10th, one day before my birthday. 1998. One of the higher-ups assigned me to take care of a new creature. It looks like a skin gorilla to me. Scott said there'd be an accident in the basement lab. I just knew something like this would happen. Those bastards in Research never sleep. Not even on holidays. Holiday, it's just my birthday, dude. May 12th, the day after my birthday. I've been wearing this damn spacesuit since yesterday. My skin's getting grimy and feels itchy all over. May 11th, the day of my birthday, 1998. I was 16 years old and the T-virus broke out. I am bad luck, everyone. May 16th, a rumor is going around that a researcher who tried to escape the estates last night was shot. My entire body feels hot and itchy and I'm sweating all the time now. I scratched the swelling on my arm and a piece of rotten flesh just dropped off. What the hell's happening to me? May 19th, fever gone but itchy. Today hungry and eat doggy food. Four slash slash, itchy, tasty. So that is a summarized version of the journal of the Keeper's Diary from Resident Evil 1. So it's neat. So that's showing, oh, and we pick up password here. Uh, it is showing that that Spencer is completely up to date on everything that's been happening. He is even getting copies of handwritten journals of people that worked for his company. I mean, like the keeper's diary, that wasn't even like a, uh, like a, a note he typed on the computer. That was something handwritten that he kept under his pillow. Uh, and somehow Oswald Spencer has a copy of it. That's insane. Just shows you that just how far gone that dude is. Shoddy, shoddy. Uh, Resident Evil 7 is my favorite. Nice. Much appreciated. You can have that, Chris. Uh, Resident Evil 7, awesome. I am currently... Uh, we've played and beaten that, obviously, when it first came out, but we've been replaying it every like couple weeks, me and my roommate. He has never played it, and he's a Resident Evil fan as well. And so, um, not like a huge, huge one, but he does like the ones he's played for the most part, uh, especially 4. I think 4 is his favorite. I was on the GameCube. Um... So anyway, uh, he, he and I have been playing it, and I think we got maybe like an hour to hour and a half left in that gameplay. So we will be playing that on this uh, channel probably in the next like two weeks. We'll get back in and, and try to finish that. Holy crap, for a second there, I thought you were saying you were born in 1998. <laughs> that would make my uh, daughter a few months older than you. Oh, no, dude. I was 16. Sweet 16 in 1998. Uh, 1998 is also the year Resident Evil 2 came out, because Resident Evil 1 came out in 1996, but it was set in 1998. And then Resident Evil 2 came out, and it's set in 1998, also just three months after the events of Resident Evil 1. So there's another emblem. Another gun. 
The Raccoon City? Fortunately, yeah. Oh, there's another one. Hard to believe that was eight years ago. Guess I am getting older. You're not the only one. <laughs> so there he is, the man himself, Oswell E. Spencer. Creepy looking dude, right? Patrick's memoirs. For a time, it appeared as if Master Spencer would recover his former health, but fate was not so kind, and now he confines himself to a study for days on end. It has been ages since I have seen him take his meals in the dining hall. I have endeavored to prepare meals to his liking, and I bring them every day to the study. Unfortunately, he lacks the strength to eat anything but soup and other liquids. I cannot recall a time in the history of this household when the situation was as dire as now. In generations past, the Spencer estate was the nexus for only the most well-to-do European socialites. Now only a skeleton staff remains to look after a man who keeps himself in virtual seclusion at one of his many residences. My family has been in the Spencer household service since the time of his great-grandfather. This rapid state of decline would have been unimaginable even just one gen- I remember fondly the days of my youth, but that seems like a lifetime ago now. It was about 50 years ago, back when my father was the head butler of the household. At that time, I was learning his duties and preparation to succeed him, and there was always some chore or errand that would keep me running around the house. I remember Lord Ashford, another aristocrat from a storied family, and one of Master Spencer's schoolmates, Dr. Marcus, would find refuge from the summer heat at this villa. Both of those guys, uh, Lord Ashford is from Code Veronica, the Ashford family uh, that led to the T. Veronica virus and the creation of it, and obviously Dr. Marcus, who was the kind of the inspiration or like found the plant along with Spencer and Ashford in Africa. Uh, that would eventually lead them to the creation of the T virus. He was working on like the progenitor virus and then it evolved into the T virus. So that's really cool um, that they mentioned all of them to get the history. And this Butler guy who's been in, you know, service to the Ashford family and that every time they have a new son or daughter, they have to care for the Ashford family. That is dedication. My father and I would accompany them and do our utmost to see what they wanted for nothing. Perhaps because I was the youngest person there, they would take to teasing me, though more often than not they would treat me as one of them. I remember the time Lord Ashford gave me my first taste of brandy. It was on the second floor of the dining hall, behind the stone statues lining the room. I will never forget the mellifluous scent when he opened the bottle, but those cherished times are only memories now. Lord Ashford, Dr. Marcus, and of course my father have already passed. Only Master Spencer remains, and I'm afraid his days may be few. His family as well as my family service to his. For now, I can only wait for the inevitable. Dang, man. Crazy. Um, I love the history of Resident Evil. It is so good, and yet um, flawed <laughs> in some ways. Uh, there's, there's there's timeline issues in certain games and, and certain storylines, and there's a lot to digest, and there's things that I get wrong all the time. And it's uh, it's a little bit of a bummer at, at times, but ultimately, the stuff I like is really strong. And it's so frustrating to see none of this, like not even like 10% of the history of this franchise and this world that the games have created, not even like a tenth of it make it into the movies. There's a lot of neat little Easter eggs in the first movie, especially. And obviously there's references to a lot of things, uh, like obvious dumb references to a lot of the things uh, from the games in the movies, but the, some about the movies just, one, they're not scary, and that's fine. You want to make a, an action franchise that sells more um, to an extent, but then again, tell that to It and tell that to The Conjuring and all these movies that are setting the stage for um, a shared you know, universe of monster movies, uh, and yet Resident Evil could have been the first one to do that. Um, if only they you know, were th thinking along the lines of the way the games are delivered, the way the stories are delivered in the games. And it's a real shame, but I guess they're gonna reboot it, so hopefully now in the wake of something like Annabelle and all those monster movies that are that tie into The Conjuring, not it, I know that's its own thing, um, but that's a horror movie that just did really well recently, is, is my point. Um, so I just think, uh, they, I think they could have been a trend setter instead of a trend follower, but, you know, say la vie. Patrick's Memoirs 2. I cannot stop thinking about the screams of those poor souls in prison in the basement. I administered the virus to all of them as per Master Spencer's instructions one week ago. Whatever they've become now, they are no longer human. 
I have assisted with multiple experiments at Master Spencer's behest. I do not know of what use a simple butler not schooled in the sciences such as myself can be, but I should be proud that the master trusts me with his important work. He usually has nothing but contempt or distrust for those around him. However, I cannot help but feel a disconnect between how I think I should feel and my actual mental state. On the one hand, I am filled with joy at the chance to assist the master in any way I can. On the other, I feel as if I'm losing a bit of my soul with each experiment I assist with. The only way I can preserve my mental f faculties is by taking time off or by trying to divorce myself from all emotion. Whichever the case, I must act and not question the master. Duty and honor, that is what is at stake. For generations, my family have been in loyal service to the Spencer household. I will not betray my duties and I will serve my master, Spencer, until the very end. I have dedicated my life to ser serving him and there is no turning my back on that. It is time to check on the test subjects and report on their current condition to Master Spencer. I will carry out my duties and I will do it honorably. So you see here that um, Patrick had a little bit of crisis of conscience. He uh, wasn't 100% sure if he should keep going with these experiments. Uh, especially it's like this guy's dying. Obviously Spencer's trying to find the cure to it all. To Eternal life is what he's looking for. That's what the whole point of the T-virus and everything was to be about. Was that uh, I'm guessing he maybe found out he couldn't have children and decided instead of like putting money into stem cell research or, or cloning or something, uh, which I guess he kind of did in a way, um, he was going to just create a virus that would make him last and live forever. Um, Moonlight Sonata. I remember the last time I played this. Think you can still but, play. Uh, but still, uh, he's carrying on experiments on his deathbed. He's having his butler do it. Uh, so there's just these monsters down there uh, that are in his basement. It's like this feeble old man upstairs and these monsters in his basement. Dun, dun, dun. I love this song, and that's because of this game. Because of the original game, I should say. All right. Done. Sweet. All right, now we got the emblem. So we pop that bad boy right here. Oh. Nice. I think you can, uh, yeah, you can hear a dog. Oh, you mother. <laughs> you hear a door shut? I thought I did. This was the biggest pain in the butt of this game was uh, walking and shooting. <laughs> People were really mad that you couldn't do that in this game and I remember not really giving that much of a crap because um, because uh, I mean in real life you wouldn't really walk and shoot at the same time pick it up Roger pick it up Roger pick it up okay I'm gonna give him everything because I think we're gonna run out of like inventory spots here soon yeah so there's another one. Boom. Heat sensitive paper. All right. So this is what we're going to use on the fireplace. Burning the paper. Stop looking at that butt, Chris. Password two. Oh, she can pick the lock now. Okay. You haven't lost your touch. Here, Jill. You're the master of unlocking. Uh, Spencer's Memoirs, Part 1. I, Oswald E. Spencer, founder of Umbrella, as well as its chief executive officer, hereby proclaim myself as ruler of all mankind. Everyone shall prostrate themselves before me as they once did for the ancient false gods. At least that was what my destiny should have been. But I did not become a god. I could not sever my ties to my own weak humanity. Instead, my body is being destroyed by this damn disease, the disease of age. It has carved wrinkles in my face like a well-weathered canyon. 
and my arms are like the thin, withered branches of a dying tree. Age has even deprived me of the use of my legs. The only chance I'll ever have of becoming a god and shaping humanity's destiny is to stop this disease from continuing to ravage my body. I believe there's a saying about realizing the joys of life when one is at death's doorstep. Sayings like that are for the weak who are going to die. They attempt to mask their fears with pithy aphorisms. Mortals can't comprehend what life means for those who death is not a concern. The ignorant are fond of making generalizations to include those who would not be party to their pedantic musings. This guy likes, uh, he definitely pulled out his dictionary for this letter. I will undo this unjust travesty done to me by time, and I will present myself as the perfect being that will rule over all mankind. I will give them a new set of commandments to govern their lives. All that remains is to find the key to eternal life. The virus manufactured by Umbrella is that key. It suppresses telomere shortening, which negates the function that limits cell division. Somewhere in that process is the key to immortality. If the process could be perfected, that key will be mine. I have the means available to me. I can realize my ambitions thanks to Alex. I lost much in human cap. I lost much in human capital following Umbrella's bankruptcy, but I still have Alex, the best and brightest of them all, and the last of my children. I have faith that if anyone can find a cure for the ailment of time that keeps me from assuming my role as the head of mankind, it is Alex. Alex will find a way. Ooh, Alex. So that is a new character that is introduced right here that we just found out about. Uh, there is a picture of where they found the flower, which is an area you actually go to in Resident Evil 5. So that's pretty cool. We got the painting right there. Um, that's really great. Spencer's memoirs too. Sorry, I thought I heard something. It sounded like creaks, like someone was walking. I have done everything Alex has asked of me. Alex's ingenuity far surpasses those of normal people. We wait for the appropriate time, gather the necessary materials, and Alex continues to keep the operation running smoothly. Most children are held back by the limits of their own in intellect, but not so much with Alex. I've never witnessed anyone so adept at absorbing the talents of others simply by observing them. I could not be more pleased. Alec displays superior qualities to everyone else. I provided everything Alex and the other researchers would need to conduct their research. Unlimited funding, top-of-the-line equipment, research materials, and an endless supply of test subjects. The only thing wanting is time. They will conduct their research on an isolated island in the South Seas that is home to an abandoned military installation from a nearby country. Alex has already gone gone there with a group of research assistants, research materials, and hundreds of test subjects. I waited in earnest for good tidings of their research. Instead, I received only a phone call a month later asking me to send more test subjects. How is it possible that they have gone through hundreds of test subjects in only a month? As my frustration rose, Alex attempted to reassure me. You'll be pleased to hear that all experiments are running smoothly. And so I continue to wait. Oof. All right, so obviously you guys know who Alex is because we've played uh, Revelations 2 last year, uh, right around this time last year. So since this is a precursor and a setup and a following of the Rev Resident Evil Revelations 1 storyline, at some point we will play through Resident Evil 5 again and we'll play through Revelations 2 to kind of get like the whole quad or I guess trilogy in a way, like between those three games. Um, it's like the, the the setting, the building up of the BSAA and the rise of the BSAA in a way, and then kind of their place in the world in uh, five, as we also see the fall of Oswald E. Spencer and Wesker, and then Resident Evil Revelations is the, the loose ends being tied up by Claire Redfield and Barry Burton. And so, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. It's a nice little arc through the three games in a way. Spencer's Memoirs 3. I have waited and waited and still no word from the island. It's been a year since they left, and I've sent thousands upon thousands of test subjects for their research. As soon as Alex makes an improvement to the virus, the team administers it to another batch of test subjects. Unfortunately, unfortunately, they do not have time to study the virus before testing it. If it looks feasible, they proceed forward and see how the test subjects react to it. All of this is to be expected, I suppose. It's not Alex's fault. I have been impatient, true, but the situation is dire. 
Age has not only worn down this worthless shell, but it also attacked my internal organs and rendered many of them virtually useless. What little functionality I can eke out of them is only thanks to the machines attached to my body. Time is a merciless enemy. I'm counting on you, Alex. Only you can give me the key to eternal life. All right, while I'm in the zone, let's just read this. Spencer's Memoirs 4. Finally, a report of success. The experiment was a success. The news alone has sent a new surge of energy coursing through my veins. I feel rejuvenated. Last night's dinner even tasted sweeter. The wine more excellent. My butler, Patrick, is truly a culinary servant. Unfortunately, that joy was short-lived. Alex, dis Alex has disappeared. I would be less concerned if that were the only regrettable report from the island. The other researchers are also nowhere to be found. Neither are the thousands of test subjects. And most importantly, all the research materials, including the final virus that was to make me a god, cannot be located. I have been betrayed. I have allowed myself to be betrayed again. I should have learned from my mistakes with Albert. Now my life stands on the edge of a knife. The only person I can trust is my loyal butler, Patrick. He is the only last hope in locating the virus that will cure me of this wretched ailment. But is time on my side? That is the question that preoccupies my mind. And only the God I am to become can answer that question. What a psycho. All right, let's put in these passwords. See what this computer has. What? Files on the Justice League members. Oh, Patrick's Memoirs, part three. I have been in Master Spencer's employ for the majority of my adult life. As of late, however, I find his actions to be inscrutable. For example, he has taken every possible precaution to conceal his whereabouts from the outside world. For what reason, I do not know. Then one day he asked me to find a certain man and make him aware of the Master's whereabouts. I do not know why he would go to such lengths to contact this man, but perhaps he wanted to see if someone could find him. The man in question is one Mr. Albert Wesker, a name I have not heard in quite a long time. I only met him once, and that was over ten years ago. I am ashamed to admit that I cannot recall his face, because as head butler it is my job to remember people. The reason, I believe, is because of his eyes, those cold, unfeeling eyes that completely overshadowed his other features. At any rate, I have endeavored to get the information into Wesker's hands without letting on that it was Master Spencer's desire that he have the information. I know of a certain unscrupulous individual who could put the information on the streets for the right price. He is the kind that does not care who he talks to. What made the individual I found of such importance is that he is in the employ of a female spy who has regular dealings with Wesker. I paid this man. I forget if his name was Roberto or Ricardo more than he deserved and gave him the bare minimum of information necessary to fulfill Mr. Spencer's wishes. I dutifully carried out better. It was at this point that the situation took an even more cryptic turn. The master, he let me go, but I do not know why. I asked for him. I asked him for a reason. The only time I have ever questioned him, but he responded with only silence. I do not know what to do now. I am filled with a sense of loss. Everything I have ever known is gone. I dedicated my entire life to serving the Spencer household, and now that book has been forcibly closed for no apparent reason. The only ones who remain will be those untrustworthy security guards and the people imprisoned below the premises. I truly doubt the guards' ability to attend to all of Master Spencer's needs. Could it be that he plans on dying? No, he is not that type of man. He would not want to leave all his affairs in such an unfinished state. Master Spencer must have some grand machinations at work that are beyond my ability to comprehend. At any rate, I can only obey his wishes and take my leave. I will be loyal until the end, even if it breaks my heart to do so. There's another file here. It looks like to be a list of test subjects. Test subjects. Number one, Hans. Number two, Felicia. Number three, Marco. Number four, Jonah. Number five, Irma. Number six, Ken. Number seven, Laura. Number eight, William. Number nine, Hero. Number 10, Derek. Number 11, Miles. Number 12, Alex. And number 13, Albert. The number of candidates has been limited to the 13 individuals listed above. Boom, secret room. All right. Chris is gonna run in there, so I gotta shoot fast. There we go. Boom! Oh crap. Here we go. 
John Lee says, Wesker! Uh, yes, so we are, we just learned about the 13 Wesker children. did it so that little emblem that was up there if you don't shoot it um, right away you don't uh, you don't you don't get that emblem I think I think that's like a timed thing um, so yes we just learned about the three Wesker children and uh, or the 13 Wesker children and you saw on there, I think, was it number eight or nine, was William, which is alluding that maybe it was William Birkin, so that a lot of these, like, super geniuses that was that were working for Wesker and developing and working on the virus were, were something he created. Uh, and that's really weird and, and interesting at the same time. Um, I think. And R.I.P. Chris, I know, right? He could have been. He was almost a Chris sandwich. All right, so now we're going to investigate this. I'm not leaving until I complete this mission. And I think we have to do it three times. See, it says a question mark there. So the third time you go to open it, boom. And now this is exactly <laughs> like Resident Evil 1. <laughs> Fixed camera angles. How cool is that? Yeah, we won't we won't go everywhere, but I just wanted to show you guys what it looked like. Ah, oh, so good. What about up here? Camera's got to shift. Ah, there you go. These amazing angles. I love it. Ah, oh, brings me right back to the good old days. All right, let's go look at one more area in the uh, in this camera angle. Oh, this is what people want right here. Like people, people want this, or at least, I mean, there are people out there. I won't say everybody wants this, but there are so many fans out there that want a next gen game with next gen graphics and then the fixed camera angles. And to them, that'll like solve the Resident Evil problem. But I, I don't think it's that simple. To me, Resident Evil isn't about Fixed camera angles. That's not what the game's about to me. Um, the perspective isn't what the game's about to me. The to me, Resident Evil. What makes it is that um, is that it's survival horror. That you don't know where your next bit of ammo is going to come from. You don't know what the next monster around the corner is going to be. And while Resident Evil Seven took a little bit of that away, because I don't like the um, the fact that it was just molded monsters and then a couple boss fights, so you pretty much fought like one monster in just different forms, like crawly form and big fat form. And to me, that was too simple, just a little too simple for my likings. Um, no, oh, well, let's find another route. But even still, um, I like Seven. I do like Seven. But, it, but yeah, Resident Evil to me is more than just camera angles. It's more than just, you know, the, the game starring Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. It's it's about building that mythology and, and building that world and presenting new threats and, 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 you know, revealing new horrors. And I think Seven did that pretty well, in my opinion. And that makes me look forward to this DLC coming out for Resident Evil 7. It comes out in a month from now. Almost exactly one month from now. Um, we are going to play Resident Evil 7, Not a Hero. And then also Zoe. Something Zoe. End of Zoe. So yeah. Got a lot of, a lot of Resident Evil coming up. So make sure you bring your ass back. All right, we are back, and we have some more Resident Evil. Uh, I think, is there one here, or is it up here? Ah, there it is. I can't see because of stupid Chris. Boom! What is that smell? I don't know. 
Sorry. I think I pooped my pants. I made poopy. Alright, so we got that one. Big thing to remember here is that every piece of ammo and and uh, and you know every bullet you have, every grenade you have, use it uh, because they go away. <laughs> it's not fun. It's not fun to lose all that ammo <laughs> and weaponry. So uh, make sure you use it. I couldn't even begin to guess how long he's been dead. Yeah, these guys. Have, it's been down here for. I mean, look at it. It's unclean too. It's just like they like infected people and just threw them into these cells. Like this right here shows you, and this is what. A prime example of good storytelling, in my opinion. They show you and they don't tell you. Like, you get the sense that uh, Oswald Spencer is a nut job and a crazy person, and that he, uh, oh, there's one, uh, and that he's like, you know, a total, just a total monster on every level. But to actually see it like this, like, all right, here's the cells that the butler was talking about, and here's all the people that are dying now, um, and have died, and are infected, and, you know, it's, it just show it just shows. You know, and that's what you want. You want things to show as well as tell. Um, or show instead of tell. In this case, we got a little bit of a setup for it. And then... Oh. Whoa, what was that? Oh. The monsters that are the... the I call these things the Steve Burnside monsters. Um, Steve Burnside is a character in Resident Evil Code Veronica that, um, that basically... Uh, got infected with like a T. Veronica virus and he became like this giant green monster that swung like an axe. And so these, to me, I just always felt like these were like some kind of extension to Steve in a way. Um, I also, and someone corrected me back when we played this the first time. Oh. Oh, he, he angry. Oh, there's one. Um... Yeah, um, back when we played this the first time, I thought that Wesker brought these creatures here. And I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense because he had samples of the, the T. Veronica virus. Um, but, uh, I, but then someone in the chat had corrected me, which is cool, which is fine by me. Because I hate getting information wrong. There he is. Get out of my way. Back up, Chris. Come on up, ugly. Yeah, boy. Boom. Up, oh, and then look at that. Nostalgia is a hell of a drug. A lot of times people want the old mechanics just because they are chasing the emotions from the original. Which is true, and there's... Really, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with that. I just hate when they condemn the new thing because of it. You know, it's like, it's like you want to love the old Resident Evil, that's fine. I do too. Uh, you want those old feelings back? So do I. Um, but that just to give like the new one, to not give it a chance because you want that feeling back is that that doesn't, you know, it's, it's limited thinking. And I, I have friends that think that way and I'm just like, I, I'm I'm kind of surprised because I'm like ah and I can maybe I thought thought better and I'm not saying that they're doing anything wrong really I just saying I'm, they're doing something I don't agree with um, which is and honestly with all the other real things happening in the world it's it's so trivial so it's not a big deal obviously but, um, but yeah that kind of just bums me out though because I'm like ah give it a chance but some people had did give it a chance and still didn't like seven which is totally cool I'm not. I didn't make seven. I didn't work on the game. I don't care whether people like it or not. I just know that I liked it. Um, and that I wouldn't mind seeing um, seeing more from that universe. I, I certainly will agree, though, I didn't like Ethan as a character. So hopefully we'll get a new main character in the next Resident Evil. Um, I don't really care if Ethan comes back or not.
You're going down, ugly. Oh yeah. All right, I don't think there's another emblem here, so we can probably keep going. All right, going down. All right. Oh, you know what? Oh, we we got. Yeah, we got bullets. I think there's an emblem out here somewhere. Oh, what just happened? Oh, here it is. I think. Shit. Move, Chris. Jeez. I remember that always being Chris or Sheva or whoever your partner is. Their problem is that they always get in your way. Like, always. All right, so we got this chest here. So we got half of that business. And then we got this. Oh, he dead. Hold on, he dropped a trinket though. I want it. He always drops those stars. Stars. All right, so that's good. We used a, we used a lot of our ammo and weapons and stuff, so that I don't feel too bad. Because last time we came through here, I was like trying to be really frugal with my ammo. I forgot about this part of the game, and uh, we didn't use a lot. We didn't use a lot of our ammo, and. Uh, and then this happened. <laughs> and this is where everything goes away. You wake up with nothing. Nothing! Jill, are you okay? I'm fine. But I lost most of my gear. Same here. Alright, try to find a way out of there. Alright, here we go. Copy that. Watch your back. So this is the part of the game where you have to, like, trick the monsters. Um, because uh, you have no ammo or no weapons. You just got the knife. The knife ain't going to do jack crap to these guys because uh, they're big and they have, uh, and they have uh, axes. All right, here we go. I was sitting, it was funny because I was sitting there going, man, can I have Chris do this and I can like be the decoy because I don't trust the, the, the computer and then sure as anything. I was like, oh, good. Hi there, ugly. Boom. <laughs> I think when you play on amateur mode, that might be all we have to do. So that's nice if that's the case. Um. Yep. That's it. Amateur mode, you only have to do one. Sweet. That's good, because this actually can be long and tedious. Um, just doing that trap like three or four times, and sometimes you don't kill enemies on the first, like, drop, you know? Um, and there is other things down here, but not ammo. Uh, it's like, so I could run around and collect more treasure, and I could collect more um, little star things if I kill, like, a zombie or a spider or something, but you don't really get any ammo or anything useful for the final battle. All right. So that's where the bridge collapsed when we ran across and we fell down there. 
Um, so luckily, there was a ladder nearby that brought us right back up. And then the last thing is right here. I think I had someone told me, they're like, oh, you can you can actually stab this with Jill. And I, I think I was here for like 20 minutes and it never, <laughs> it never happened. I was like, sure you can. Um, all right, so now we're special agents that were sent here or ordered. Because remember, Oswald Spencer apparently wanted to die. And I'm really curious because this is a man who was looking for a cure, looking for all these things. And, uh, and I'm really interested to know what really was in his head because he... It's, I feel like he maybe didn't develop a cure. Oh, look at that. We got them all. Wish upon a star. Sweet. I feel like he didn't develop a cure, but maybe he developed something in his search for a cure that maybe he thought he could use to control the Wesker children. And maybe that's why he set all that up to where he's like, all right, I'm going to lure Wesker to me and get him alone in a room. And I think I'll be able to, like, you know, seize control of him or, or brainwash him or, or, or inflict some kind of control and make him feel make Spencer feel like a god and then it backfires uh, because I think the Wesker children were spe were always meant to be obedient to Wesker I mean to to Spencer but then when it happened and as they you know Wesker and Birkin and even Alex all started to break away from him he lost his control or his grip on them so I wonder if maybe he was developing something to regain that control you take it Roger and that's you know why he he thought maybe he had the upper hand and he leads Wesker in and then obviously what, what's about to happen is, you know, that he doesn't, uh, his dream isn't fulfilled or maybe his plans didn't go the way he wanted them to. I always w wondered about the motivation of that because he did. He set breadcrumbs. He went out of his way to get uh, uh, Roberto, um, I can't remember, if it, I think it was Roberto, uh, to who worked for Ada and Ada who had done missions with Wesker to let Wesker know that where Spencer was and have it not traced back to that where Spencer wanted it to happen. He didn't want Wesker to know he was lured there. And uh, I wonder why he would go through all that trouble just to die. Bam! Yeah, he's got superpowers, by the way. Ow! Okay, spoke too soon. Dang, got him good on that one. Chris is gonna die. Will you get a punch in, dude? Oh, ow. <laughs> Shoot. Ow. Oh, shoot. Oh, Chris can't help me because he's dying. Where are you, Chris? Chris, where are you? Oh, my goodness. Ooh. Dang, we didn't beat him, though. You have, like, they, he gives you, like, a certain amount of time to beat him. But because I had to save Chris's butt so many times, that's the one frustrating thing about this game, is that your AI partners are stupid. So stupid. Seeing this in black and white, though, was awesome. I gotta say. So ever since the Spencer Mansion, Resident Evil 1... They thought they killed Wesker then. They got away. The, the, the person on their team that betrayed them all, that betrayed stars, that took information from Umbrella and was willing to sell it to a highest bidder out there, uh, turns out to be alive, become superhuman, and they've been tracing him and following him all around the globe for eight years trying to find him, leading up to this moment right here. And they are getting their butts kicked. <laughs> It's like if Tyson fought an infant, it's <laughs> it's bad. Two enemies, Chris and Wesker, Superman and Lex Luthor, Batman and Joker. Or is it? Because this is the part that just makes it go, yeah. 
Jill with the power play. Ah. Jill! Ah, so good. So good. Oh, no. What happened to Jill Valentine? How will Chris deal with the loss of a partner? Find out one day. If you haven't already played Resident Evil 5 and don't already know the answers, on this channel, we will play Resident Evil 5 at some point in the future. But until then, thank you all for watching. I will see you in the future. Peace. This open window can lead somewhere or nowhere. It's up to you. What do you mean, who is this? It's Chris. Why won't you believe me?